Um, good morning, my YouTube viewers. Crystal here. Um, I've turned the camera off so you can't see me because it's in the middle of the night, and obviously I'm in my nightgown and everything like that. So, um, I'm using my new laptop, which I had some problems this morning with it because, like nowadays, whenever you get equipment and stuff, you don't get a user's manual or anything like that. So, if there's a problem, you just have to figure it out yourself. So I did actually figure out the problem, so that means I can make my video since I figured out the problem. This morning's video is going to be on the same shampoo data set that I was working on yesterday. But what I've done today is rather than using linear, linear regression, I've used random forest regressor to see if I can get a better score with random forest regressor. Regressor. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through the code and when we go through the code You will find out if we got a better score with random forest regressor when we're working on this shampoo database so The first thing I did was I got this Shampoo data set off of Jason Brownlee's site. Jason Brownlee's getting lots of free advertising from me and um so I got it off his GitHub account as well. So he has his own GitHub account. And rather than me, you know, take this uh, data set and save it onto my GitHub account, I just decided I would use it on his GitHub account. And so I created the uh, program on Jupyter Notebook. And when I created the program on Jupyter Notebook, I was able to in import the libraries that I needed. The reason why I could import the libraries that I needed is because most of the libraries and Python are already installed on Jupyter Notebook. So that's a good thing about Jupyter Notebook. So um, after we imported the libraries, what we did was we loaded the file that I got off Jason Brownlee's GitHub, GitHub account. And basically, um, I wanted to have two columns, a column of month and a column of sales. So I had to take off this little code here where it says index call equals zero. So that meant that there wasn't an index call. And then on that index call equals zero, then what it did was it actually made the month the index column. And I didn't want the month to be an index column. So that's why I took out this code that says index call equals zero. So we wanted to see what was in the data set. So the month was the date time and the sales was a float. We checked to see if there were any null values. And there's not any, any null values, so fortunately we did not have anything that we needed to impute. And then what we did was we converted the date to the, the number in the Gregorian calendar. And we used the two ordinal statement in pandas to do that. And so I actually looked up what two ordinals does. And two ordinal goes back to the date 1 January 0001, I believe. And um, it gives you the ordinal date from that time. So you can look up ordinal, two ordinal if you want, which is what I did. And that's what it said it does. It goes back to the Gregorian calendar from 1 January 0001. And it gives you the numerical date of that. So that was interesting. Now that we have an ordinal date, we have no further need for the month. So I just dropped the month. So now we just got sales and ordinal date. And what I did was I plotted the sales on the diagram so you can see how the sales were gradually moving up over time 
So I've defined my x and my y values. x is series.dateordinal and y is series.sales because this is a univariate sales model. So now what we've done is we've normalized the data and I decided to use code in pandas or Python to actually normalize the data. So x equals x minus x mean over x max minus x min. And so that'll give you a normalized figure. And what a normalized figure does is it gives you a value between uh, 0 0.01 and 0.99 because what they want to do is they want to keep the value between 0 and 1 because it will be easier for the uh, model to predict on your DEFNA if it's normalized. So that's what they've done. Now what I've done is I've split the data up for training and validation. And again, I did this manually. So train size equals len, integer length x times 90%. So x train x val equals x 1 to train size 1 and then x train size. So y train y val equals y 1 to train size and y train size. So, and then what you do is you check the shape of it. And when we check the shape of it, we get a 31, 31, 4, 4. Which I think what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to modify this code a little bit and see if it corrects a problem. That'll be a good thing for me to do, just to modify it quite, to take the one out and see what happens if it affects the shape of the X train, Y train, X bell, Y bell. And then so what I had to do was I had to reshape it. And when I reshaped it, then it reshaped it into a format that the model wanted to see and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here and I'm going to modify this just slightly and see if that affects the shape. Now I've defined my model so I've got random force regressor and I decided that I wanted to set verbose up to true because I wanted to see what the model was actually doing. Because normally what happens is when you define your model, um, normally it's verbose, it's just off by default. But when the verbose is off by default, you don't actually see what the model's doing. So I made the, or I made the model true. So I had in estimators equals 1000, max depth equals 5, and verbose equals true, and random state equals 1, and then I fit it. And so I predicted on x val, and so I've got my array of four values, and these array of four values are exactly the same. So I checked my error. My error was 28,495, but one thing that you need to know is whenever I used the baseline, which was um, Jason Brownlee's work, which is why I haven't done a video on it, because it's Jason Brownlee's work. It was only 17,731. And when I used linear regression, it was 24,023. So with linear regression, I actually got a, a less error than I did with random forest. And I got less error on baseline than I got for both of those. So we've got, I made a little data frame so you can see what the predictions were and all the predictions were exactly the same. 
I made a, a graph so you could see visual representation of the predictions and the predictions were just a straight line. So we put the final result on a data frame and then we converted it to a CSV file. And then so if I was going to actually submit the results to a competition, then I've got my CSV file handy. So that concludes this code review. I will be doing a, um, what do you call it? I will be doing a blog post on this. And when I do the blog post, what I will do is I will provide the link to my GitHub account so you can use the code if you need to use the code. And um, if you like my video, please like, subscribe, and share. Um, if you want to keep receiving videos from me, then please, please press the notification bell by the subscribe button, and then you will get notifications whenever I make a video. If you like the work I do and want to support me, I've got my email address to my PayPal account in the description box down below. And the reason why is because I don't have enough subscribers to monetize, which is why I have to ask for donations. So thank you so much for watching this video, and I look forward to making new videos for you in the future.